Welcome to St Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement. In this service, we're reflecting on the congregation's namesake, St Luke, whose feast day is uh, October the 18th, which, if you're watching this in 2021, is a Monday. As we begin this time of worship, I invite you at home or wherever you're watching this video to share in this uh, responsive reading, which is an act of praise to God. Blessed are you, compassionate Father, creator of all. We glorify and adore you. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, loving saviour of the world. We glorify and adore you. Blessed are you, eternal spirit, gracious source of light and life, we glorify and adore you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Lord our God, source of sure and certain hope, we praise your name for ever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to continue with me in prayer as we give praise to God and as we seek God's healing and uh, blessing on our lives. Let's continue in prayer. Holy One and Holy Three, life-giving God, you have come amongst us in Jesus. And in Jesus, you announce good news for the poor, liberty for captives, sight for those who cannot see, and freedom for the oppressed. In you is love that surpasses all loves. You are the light of all lights. We confess our need of you. We're not meant to navigate this life on our own. Help us to be honest about ourselves. Help us to disentangle the good from the bad. Enable us to be humble enough to declare that in too many ways we have not lived up to the standard of living found in Christ. Bring your healing, forgiveness and good news into our lives. Break us free from anything that takes us away from the path of Christ. Please gather us up into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Assure us that you desire to forgive us through and through, that you desire to deal with the burden of guilt that so many carry. May we hear your good news of hope and liberty right within the core of our beings. And may we be open to the Holy Spirit, transforming us more and more into the people you would have us be, through Christ Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Friends, this is the best of all. When we are empty, God fills us. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. When we confess our sin, God forgives. In th Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's listen now to two readings from Luke's Gospel. The first is uh, the opening words that Luke offers uh, and indicates that he's writing his work to a Greek scho scholar or an important person who's clearly Greek because his name is Theophilus. And then we hear the famous story of Jesus in the, temp sorry, in the synagogue uh, reading from the prophet Isaiah and declaring that as these words are spoken, they have come true. Let's listen now to our scripture readings. Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Dear Theophilus, Many people have done their best to write a report of the things that have taken place among us. They wrote that we have been told by those who saw these things from the beginning and who proclaimed the message. And so, Your Excellency, because I have carefully studied all these matters from their beginning, I thought it would be a good idea to write an orderly account for you. I do this so that you will know the full truth about everything which you have been taught. Luke 
chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Then Jesus returned to Galilee, and the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. The news about him spread throughout all the territory. He taught in the Syanganese and was praised by everyone. Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath he went as usual to the Syangan. He stood up to read the scriptures, and when was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the people in the Syangan had their eyes fixed on him, as he said to them, This passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it being read. Having heard those passages from Luke's Gospel, let me talk a little bit about St. Luke. Sometimes he's called Luke the Evangelist, but um, it's important to realise that both the Gospel of St. Luke and also um, the Book of Acts are in fact both written by Luke and they form one piece of literature and should be read as a whole. Luke tells us at the beginning of his account, as you heard, that he's intending to set down an orderly account of events. And what those events are relate to the very nature of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And the interesting thing about Luke is we don't know much about him. For him, it was more important to declare the good news than talk about himself. We do know that... um, He appears in various places in his own writing, particularly, well, specifically in the Acts of the Apostles, because there's a few places in the Acts of the Apostles where the word we is used. So he's clearly relating to himself as well as others. So, for example, in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, we hear, when he, Paul, had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia. So that would seem to be talking about Luke himself. He's talking about himself, being with Paul and travelling. Outside of his own writings, he's mentioned in three New Testament letters, Philemon, Colossians and 2 Timothy. And he's described by Paul as the beloved physician. Paul regards Luke as a loyal companion. And I think that's important because not everyone got on well with with Paul, but clearly Luke did. I think it's also important to realise that Luke, in declaring the good news of Jesus, is, as I say, not wanting to point to himself, but point to that good news. So he wants to talk about the liberty that's given to captives, the sight that can be brought to the blind, the freedom that can come to the oppressed. And he wants to announce that the Lord's time is now. And he sees that happening in the life of the early church following the ascension of Jesus. It's interesting if you read through Luke's gospel and compare it with, say, Mark and Matthew's, you'll see that he has a lot to say about Mary in the birth narratives. So his focus is around Mary when, uh, of course, Mark doesn't say anything about the birth of Jesus and Matthew tends to focus on Joseph. Also, Luke has a lot more to say than Mark and Matthew about the resurrection of Jesus. And also throughout his gospel, Luke focuses on the fact that Jesus offers hospitality, hospitality to all sorts of people, the least and the lost. He reaches out and he touches lepers. This is the sort of thing that Luke wants to focus on. Just before I conclude what I have to say about St. Luke, I just want to share with you a couple of interesting facts that I discovered more recently about him. The first of these is that his name, Luke, comes from the Latin lux, which means light. So it seems to be quite appropriate that this person that's talking about good news is, is talking about the light of Christ and his name means light. 
The other interesting and somewhat more unusual fact about Luke that I've learned about recently is that historically his symbol has been that of an ox, which frankly I thought when I first he heard it was a bit weird. And the, uh, the example of the, uh, of the image that you can see on your screen at the moment comes from a book that dates from perhaps 600 years after Christ, so it's a very early one. It seems that um, early Christian writers went to the book of Revelation, in particular Revelation chapter 4 verse 6, and saw there a passage which spoke about four creatures around the heavenly throne. And those four creatures were a human, an eagle, a lion and an ox. And those four creatures, these early Christian writers, uh, sort of connected to the four writers of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And I think poor old Luke may have got the short straw because he ended up with the ox. That said, however, other writers have pointed out that the beginning and the end of Luke's gospel takes place in the temple. And what happened in the temple? There were sacrifices made to God. And of course, sometimes even oxen were sacrificed. And the whole heart of the Christian gospel is about God's giving of his son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself in sacrifice for all of us. So St. Luke was a person, well, we do, by the way, I forgot to say, of course, that he's known to have been a physician. That's the only other thing we know about him. So Luke wrote about Jesus. He didn't point to himself and he was known as a physician and a good companion. And so I think the takeaway from this, from this uh, reflection on St. Luke is we are called to walk in his way, to not point to ourselves, but to point to Jesus Christ and like St. Luke, in whatever way we can, we're called to bring healing and new life to others. Let me conclude now with a very short prayer that's been written for St. Luke's day. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician, whose praise is in the gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some of you may have heard of the uh, hymn writer, Timothy Dudley Smith, uh, Anglican bishop actually. And he is well known for his version of the Magnific Magnificat, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. But he also has written a song about St. Luke. And uh, some of our singers are going to share that with, you, with us now.
So let me, um, it's Lloyd Walker. Um, I'm stepping in for this little bit where we're going to talk a little bit about the life at uh, St Luke's. So um, we're going to start with a bit of a visit around the site um, uh, by, oh actually no, I'm not going to do that. Got my orders back to front. I'm going to give you a history back a little bit and uh, one, to help you understand why the uh, church became known as St Luke's. The, uh, I'm impressed because this church, 12 years before the Uniting Church formed, so in 1965, they started having conversations between the different denominations in the area. So the Presbyterian and the Methodist churches connected to each other and started having conversations. And it continued um, through various meetings and talk of cooperation, um, all in the lead up to the decision uh, to form a scheme of cooperation in 1971. And that led through to a, a vote so that by the 1972, this community had decided to form what they called the Highton Methodist Presbyterian Cooperating Parish. Now, it's a bit of a mouthful. But five years before uniting, the Uniting Church came into being, people were meeting together from across denominations. I think the next image is really helpful because in 1973 and 4, after they'd been discussing what they should be called, because the other name was a bit of a mouthful, um, one of our um, great stalwarts, um, the uh, Clive Champion, suggested that we actually be renamed St Luke or St Luke's Highton. And it's for all the reasons Paul's just alluded to you. He was um, seeing that St Luke was a physician and a healer. And he believed that the forgiveness and taking the message of the Redeemer to the Gentiles was to be the purpose of this community. It was appropriate then that members of this community were already reaching out to our brothers and sisters in the Pacific with various work parties and support arrangements. And this one is a photo from 1974 in Fiji. And that um, commitment has commi continued down through the ages as the church has moved forward into Union in 1977 and various activities involving uh, refugees where we've been wel welcoming those uh, people into our community supporting uh, the various service arms of the church and most recently the conversations we've been having about how do we rebuild this community um, with a view to it being a place of sanctuary education, hope uh, and uh, learning uh, and hospitality in our community. So more of that will come. Now we get to uh, listen to our roving reporter, Sue Anderson. This is your roving reporter at the St Luke's Uniting Church, Highton, checking on what goes on. Here we have some of our friends at St Luke's. Clean on that store is totally redundant. Yeah. It does nothing. Why don't we just it hasn't got get some more piping and put a pipe through, through into no, that? No, it doesn't. Those machines, doesn't matter. I've got... And that's just one day this week. And so here's some more photos of the people that make up this community. Friends in Messy Church. And um, before I leave that one, of course, some of you have been coming and wondering why all the people were parked in their car parks. Of course, uh, every, at the moment, most weeks, there's a collectible sale. And that's also an opportunity for people to come and share and talk and celebrate. So as we go forward, let's take our time as uh, everybody's been generously giving to the work of this place, both in their time and in their gifts. Let's go into a time for the prayers for the offering. Let's pray. We bring our gifts to you, O God, in gratitude and hope. In dedicating them, we dedicate ourselves again to be your people in the world, in the strength and enabling power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Just a few things in relation to sharing the life of the congregation going forward. Um, there has been, uh, through the uh, mail out, an uh, invitation to share in a um, survey to, to, to sort of gauge people's thoughts about how we might meet as we take the roadmap out of COVID. So if you haven't had the opportunity or taken the opportunity to fill that in, we'd encourage you to do that. And there'll be information about that sent out this week um, again. Also, uh, Val Grills has, um, and I think I might have a slide about this, I'll just see. Val Grills has, um, well, that's another slide, and that's that we will have our usual prayers on Zoom at 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning. And I'll get to Val, there she is. Val Grills has cards, Christmas cards available for those who'd like to purchase them and in the process support the leprosy mission. Let's move now to our prayers of intercession. And um, this, this prayer that I'm going to lead is a prayer that um, offers or really invites you to add your words to the prayers. And I suspect Lloyd will light some candles as we go through. But uh, this is, so there'll be a lot of space for you to add your prayers and thoughts in prayer as we journey through this prayer. Let's pray. O oh Lord, hear the deep prayers of our hearts. Prayers for hope for those who feel desolate and are struggling to find meaning in life. Prayers for healing for those who are in physical, mental or spiritual need. Prayers for jobs for those who cannot find paid employment. Prayers for community, for those who feel isolated. Prayers for peace, for those whose lives are filled with conflict. Prayers for people who genuinely listen, for those who are seeking to be understood. Prayers for comfort, for those who grieve. Prayers for food and clean water for those who hunger and thirst. Prayers for shelter for those who are homeless. Prayers for those impacted by droughts, fires or flooding rains. Prayers for freedom for those who live under dictatorships. Prayers for wisdom for our leaders. Prayers for spiritual growth and health for our churches. And we offer these prayers in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, and I invite you wherever you are to pray in the words or the form that you're most used to. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as you go into the week, may you know that God goes with you. And may the words of Archbishop Desmond Tutu go with you. He said on one occasion, go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death, victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.